We will now discuss the bones of the forelimbs and hind limbs using this model. Now in the forelimb we have talked of the upper arm bone. This is humerus. The head of humerus fits into this depression here. This is the pelvic, uh, sorry, the pectoral girdle. And this ca cavity or depression which is visible here is the, del uh, sorry, the glenoid cavity. So head of humerus fits into this cavity and this makes a ball and socket joint. So this is the head part. This middle part, long bony part is known as the shaft. And if you observe it carefully, we find a little bulge in the middle part. And this bulge which we see in the middle region is the deltoid ridge. So this part becomes little wider so that the muscles can get attached. So this ridge like structure is deltoid ridge. The lower part of humerus articulates with the other bone that is in this part it is radiovalna. And we have seen that if we keep the hand like this, the bone which is towards the thumb is radius. That means out of this two, this bone is radius and the other bone is ulna because we see we keep the hand like this so that the thumb comes on the inner side and these are the fingers so this is thumb the index finger middle the ring finger and the little finger so the bone which is towards the thumb is the radius bone and the other bone that is ulna and now if we look at this from the other side this is same humerus and this bone is the ulna bone now in the ulna bone there is this a structure which is known as the olecranon process and it is hook like this olecranon and in the humerus part here there is a depression where this olecranon bone is going to fit now i'm going to move this lower arm if i move it in this direction it folds completely and if you see it from this side this olecranon process lets it happen but if I move it backward, it makes a lock kind of a structure and that is why our elbow joint is not able to move in the opposite direction. So this makes a hinge joint. It moves in the upper side, but it locks. So this olecranon process, which acts as a hook like structure, fits into this depression, which is known as the fossa. So these are the two bones. This is radius, the one which is towards the side of the thumb and the other one is ulna. Now coming to this hand part, it, this is the wrist part. In this wrist region, there are eight bones and these eight are known as carpals and they are arranged in two rows of four each. This we have seen in the diagram also. This part makes the palm. Here wrist was having carpals. In the palm region, the bones are known as metacarpals. And when we talk of phalanges, in this thumb region, there are two phalanges. In the index finger, we have one, two, and three pieces. Here also three pieces, three and three. So our phalangeal formula was two, three, 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 and three. So in the phalangeal region, in the digit region, there are two bones in the thumb part, three in all other fingers, that is in four fingers. So if we again count the number, this is one, these are two, that is three, and eight here. Three, eight, and three would make it 11. Then five in this region, that is 11 and five, 16, plus two in this region, 18, plus three, 18 plus three would make it 21, then three, 24, then three, 27, and three, 30. That is how we have 30 bones in one arm. So two arms would have 30 bones each. So this is how the bones of our hands or forearms or four limbs are arranged. Now let us talk about the hind limb. Let us now see the bones of the hind limb. This long bone is the thigh bone or femur. And if you can see this, this part is the head. And the head is at an angle to this shaft. This head fits into a cavity here. This cavity is known as acetabulum. This is the cavity in the pelvic girdle and the cavity is where these three bones of the pelvic girdle, they fuse. So the head of femur fits into this acetabulum and that makes a ball and socket joint. 
So femur is the longest bone and if you can see it carefully, this is a very strong bone also. The lower end has two condyles. These two structures, they are the semicircular condyles and anteriorly you can find a flat bone attached to this. There is a depression here and the patella, this bone, small piece is the kneecap or patella. The lower bones, there are two this one which is slightly thicker is the tibia and this thin bone is the fibula. So this tibia and fibula. So tibia it fits into this femur part. So if you can carefully observe it the condyles fits in, fit into this uh, fibula tibia part and because of this movement the joint can move in this direction but if we move it anteriorly, this patella acts as a lock. It doesn't let the joint move in the opposite direction. So these two bones are tibia and fibula. The feeble bone, the thin bone, it articulates with the ankle part. And this region is the foot region. The bone which is big here, this is the heel bone or calcaneum. Here comes the ankle region which has seven tarsals. This part is the sole part which is made up of five metatarsals and again the digits. So the digits are two here, three, three, three and three. So the number is same as uh, we have in case of the hands. So phalanges, whether they are in hands or toes which are in the feet region, they have the same formula that is and we always count it from the inner side. So it is two, three, three, three and three. So if we count these bones, we should get the number 30 again. So let us start from here now. The phalanges, two, three, three, three and three. This uh, makes the number of bones in this region 14. Plus if we add the five metatarsals of the sole region, the bones would become 19. And then if we come to the ankle region, there are seven bones which are called tarsals so 19 plus 7 would make it 26 so 26 bones would be there in this three parts that is the ankle sole and the phalanges or the digit region now 26 bones in this region then 27 28 femur is 29 and this patella would make the 30 so there are 30 bones in the hind limbs 30 bones in the forelimbs and 30 bones in the hind limb region. So after seeing this model, now we are able to understand each bone in a proper manner, its shape and articulation with the other.